الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة عند الأمانة فصلوات ربنا وسلامه عليه وعلى أصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين All praise are due to Allah the one and only I bear witness there is no deity or God worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The creator of heavens, earth, what's in them, what's between them, what's beyond them He is our creator, He is our Lord, He is our sustainer Allah, the one and only, the absolute, to whom belongs everything in the universe. And we bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the last and final messenger of Allah to humanity, the messenger of peace, the method, messenger of Islam, the messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sealed the house of prophecy with him. He has sent him with the religion of truth, and he has sent him with an incredible miracle, which is the last testament from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity, the Quran. So if anyone asks who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and last messenger of Allah to humanity and his miracle is the Quran. It is a living miracle. Anybody that wants to come into Islam, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and reads the Quran, he will understand that this is a book that is coming from the divine himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers, we have to speak of the ability to forgive, the ability to overcome our grievances between us as Muslims. And unfortunately, what you see out there is a world of Muslims, they're holding grudges and it goes into more than that and into war and into killing one another. And the Prophet وسلم, has mentioned in the hadith, لا ترتدوا بعدي كفارا يضرب بعضكم أعناق بعض. Do not turn after me as disbeliever by some of you would kill others. Meaning you're engaging in the act of killing one another Muslims, men and women. Forgiveness is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking all of us. When we end up our prayer, daily prayer, the first thing that the Prophet sallallahu has asked us to do is to ask Allah for forgiveness three times. Not only that, but he has mentioned the hadith to Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, inni uhibbuk. لا تدعنا دبر كل صلاة أن تقول اللهم عني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك. O Mu'adh, I love you. Do not leave your salah after before saying, O oh Allah, help me to worship you, to thank you, and to perfect my ibadah and worship to you along with the dhikr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many things that we have to adhere to. Once we bring things into perspective, once we have control over our feelings, once we control, we have control over our deeds, once we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how much we have, how much we strive in life, how much some of it get lost, some of it unfortunately got stolen and some other human beings thinking they're smarter and they take your right away. And this moves and transfers people from being a sin, pure sin Muslim to somebody that is out for revenge. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to be very careful that if you were to be wronged, and you want to take your right back, do not exceed the limit of what you were wronged for. 
somebody took a hundred dollars from you, make sure if you were to go back, you get only a hundred dollars. You cannot get any more. And you have to be able to do it and stop there and move beyond that. Remember the, the worst thing amongst Muslims is when they are in disaccord, when they don't like each other, when they are charged, their hearts is charged against each other. Even in the first battle, the battle that changed the world, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it, Ghazwa Badr, the battle of Badr al-Kubra, the, the main Ghazwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked the believer, wa aslihu dhata baynikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that he is asking the believer that he has given them the support, but the first thing we should do as believers is to make amends between ourselves. That amends makes a healthy society. That healthy society emanates the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to everyone around it. And not only that, but not only that it will emanate the light, you and your brothers and sisters will live in peace amongst yourself. Among the things that you have seen the Sahaba, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do, that if someone, the Prophet sallallahu has ordered one of them to do something, and another Sahabi companion thought that he should be awarded that deed, you know. So he goes to the Prophet sallallahu and he tells him, Prophet of Allah, why did you choose this person over me? Like, Ja'far, may Allah be pleased with him. He, the Prophet ﷺ had chose three, two other leaders for the battle of Mu'tah before Ja'far. And when he came in and he told him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I felt, you know, the people were talking around and they were saying that if Muhammad ﷺ had thought in Ja'far to be a good leader, he would have chosen him first. And the Prophet smiled and told him, Ja'far, do you want people to say that Muhammad hires only out of his own, his own family? Remember, right now, a lot of leaders are having their entourage and their circle of trust, and not only their family and their kids and their aunts and their uncles and all of that, which is not, not acceptable in Islam. Islam, one of the most important thing is that you will award the job or the duty to the person that is qualified for it. If that person is not qualified for it, it doesn't matter. The uncle of the Prophet Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, who is the father of Ibn Abbas, the famous Sahabi that we call him the dictionary of the Quran. That's how mashallah he has so much knowledge came to the Prophet one day and told him, Ya Rasulullah, Allah, He came to the Prophet and told him, Ya Rasulullah, I'm ready. Why don't you give me a job? Why don't you give me a place of leadership? And the answer of the Prophet Sallallahu was, Ya Ammi, Inna la nu'atiha man yatlubuha. Oh my uncle, I do not give jobs or assign leadership to people that come and ask for it. And the reason was that if you were to ask for it, nobody will help you. You know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you between this position and the leadership. If you were to be chosen to be a leader in any parts of life, any walk of life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you not only responsible at the day of judgment, if you are a head of a department that had 10 people or more under you, but he will help you fulfill that. But remember, brothers, that every single thing that we do has to have the right intention, right niyyah, that you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. And most want the leadership for the leadership, most want to be known and pointed at, most want to have their name on on TV and sometimes on the social media. So quite a few don't do it purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn from the Hasis al-Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will call at the day of judgment and say, whoever has done any deed to please anyone other than me or took me as a partner with them, with that entity, with that person, with that idol, let him go. Let him go to that idol that he was seeking to please with that person and let that person pay him. And the only one that pays at the day of judgment is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one of the things that we all have to be cognizant of. You will come in and say, what is the forgiveness in that? The forgiveness is what we learn from the Prophet wasallam. When people came and told them untruth, he used to turn his, his head away from them. To the right, to the left, until that person leaves. If he comes and tells him something untruthful, he would stop and not answer him, turn away until the person comes back and tell him the truth. The Prophet ﷺ always kept the door open between him and everybody around him. And this is what we all need to learn, that even if you are in disaccord with somebody, even if you are trying to get your right and you're unable to get it from that person or that person, just leave that door open. Never close the door between you and another human being. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of the hearts. He can change his or her heart in a second, a split of a second. This way you will always maintain that love between you and your brothers and sisters in Islam. We will be a stronger community. We will be standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called. And this is where you find the Prophet وسلم, his forgiveness in everything. One disbeliever, Zainab, the daughter of Rasulullah وسلم, was at the time on the camel and she was pregnant in her last month. And she was going from Mecca to Medina to join her father. وسلم. One of the disbelievers punched the camel so hard that he threw Zainab May Allah be pleased with her off of him. She hit the ground, she miscarried, she lost her baby, and through, due to her injuries, she died later on. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Mecca again, and Allah opened up the holy city of Mecca, that man started running, thinking that he's going to go to the Red Sea and beyond that to a different country because Rasulullah will not forgive that deed and he will definitely take his revenge on him. So the Prophet ﷺ sent out to him and told him, come back, I have forgiven you. So the crimes that you can see being committed against a man like Muhammad ﷺ, and you see that powerful part of forgiveness. If it were any one of us, not only he would have taken his revenge, he would have wished that he has that person in front of him and cut him in pieces. But if you want to learn how to forgive, and this is the ultimate forgiveness, a person that has not only transgressed the boundary, but has taken away a life, two lives that are so dear to you. Dear brothers, think of Islam as the religion of forgiveness. If your brother or sister said something that you didn't like, pretend that you haven't heard it. Give him or her another chance. Be in accord with them. Give them time to recount what they've said and come back and apologize. Don't force that relationship into breaking it and severing the relationship. Among the things that makes us so strong as Muslim is our unity. And that unity cannot be achieved without believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and walking in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, I will make dua and say ameen after me. Allahumma afir lil-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat al-ahyai minum wa al-amwad innaka qareebun mujibun sabi'un da'awad Allahumma jal qur'ana azim rabi'a qulubina ونور صدورنا وجلاء أمومنا وحزاننا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه جهلنا ورزقنا حق تلاوته أنا الليل وأطراف النهار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب قل ادعوا الله <تصفيق>
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين وأقوموا الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين